Alright you though, what's poppin' and welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're talking about Arsenal. Yeah, I know, I know. It's been a while since I've done a match preview, but I've wanted to talk a lot about the Chelsea team recently uh, and look at potential transfer targets because there's a lot of information circling around and obviously we're going ever closer to the January window. So when I see information, I want to consolidate it and present it to my viewership. Anyway, London Derby, Lampard versus Arteta, Chelsea versus Arsenal, all that luck. So I want to get into that today, so please do subscribe to Football Therapy if you haven't yet done so. Click the bell notifications icon. Why not like the video, help your brother out, and let's get into this video. Right, where Chelsea at the moment? Probably the most unpredictably predictable team in the Premier League at the moment, if that makes sense. Exciting, yet disappointing. Hopeful, yet hopeless. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Never, never chilled out of Chelsea, is it? Like, generally, if you ask me, I'm a Chelsea fan, obviously. If you ask me, Jan, what do you think about Chelsea at the moment? I, a lot of the time, I'm like, I've never been happier. My favourite Chelsea player is the coach. See all the youngsters coming through, they're playing, you know, you're never a dull game. Actually, that's a lie. Saints was a dull game. But generally, I'm pretty happy with how things are going. Maybe apart from the abuse some young players are getting. But generally, I'm pretty happy, I think. Anyway, all that aside, a couple of transfers in January, everyone will be happy. So, Chelsea go away and play the Gooners, who are poor. <laughs> right, here's the difference between Chelsea and Arsenal at this point in time. Chelsea are hanging on by their fingernails into the top four spot, which really, obviously, is their own doing because they all had a comfortable gap at one point and they just kept losing games at home to inferior opposition, no disrespect to those opponents. Thinking of Arsenal, they were like, right, this isn't working with Unai, they sacked him, they brought in Nuremberg for a little bit to see what's happening, obviously didn't work, and they got Arteta, who I think is actually a good appointment. I mean, really, on paper, Carlo Ancelotti going to Everton, for me, he suited Arsenal down to a T, the sort of player whisperer who likes attacking football. He gets the best out of sort of expressive attacking players, which just seemed perfect for Arsenal. But I get it, I think Arsenal are desperate to start building something. You don't really start building something with Ancelotti. You do with Arteta if you believe in him, and I guess it's still a roll of the dice or a flip of the coin regardless. His first game, they drew to Bournemouth, which is probably the most Arsenal thing in the world at the moment. Anyway, I'm kind of digressing here. The difference between Chelsea and Arsenal is the pressure is massively on Chelsea at the moment because it's interesting, the whole season for Chelsea, right, pre-season, there was no pressure. Frank Lampard had to play the kids, he lost his biggest and best offensive contributor in Eden Hazard, you know, transfer ban, relatively inexperienced coach himself, and opposition around him were really deep into their own respective projects. So, you know, get top eight, Frank, see if you can do a cup run, Good on you, mate. If you can, please get out of the group stages of the Champions League. I mean, granted, the Champions League can already be considered a success, but everything else was so much better than expected that now they've sort of almost created this pressure for themselves. Everything happened backwards. It's like when Sarri came to Chelsea and won 18 games or had an 18 game on beating streaking little comps and then kind of flipped. But Arsenal, they don't have this pressure. They're like, damn, we're not gonna get top four. <laughs> Chelsea are in the fourth spot. It does look like the other three places are a shoe in Leicester and Liverpool and City. Be honest, Wolves are coming in hard. But the sort of conventional two teams to go against them would be. Um, yeah, I can't talk anymore. Tottenham and United. So, Arsenal, I think the what the fans want and what the club want at the moment is just something to hold on to, to look forward and say, yeah, this is the right decision for the moment moving forwards for the next two, three seasons. And Arteta could well be there. So, all they gotta do is show progress in what they're trying to do, but Chelsea need results. Fortunately, Chelsea are away from home. They have this weird new pressure that they put on themselves at home, which is probably the most un-Chelsea thing ever. Certainly, from years ago, they could always back themselves at home, even when they were really poor, like say, when they finished 10th. Stamford Bridge was still a fortress, but that's not the case, so hopefully they can go away from home and express themselves a little bit more. I think Frank Lampard here, 
The thing is right, <laughs> this, is what, this is what I think. In regards to tactical approach, I've said this so many times, when the 343 works, Frank Lampard panics and uses it again, like when it worked at Molyneux and he did it against Valencia. Obviously it worked at Tottenham and he did it against Saints. Valencia and Saints, he should not have done it and it did not work. The thing is, you could probably make an argument that he should use it away at Arsenal because of how Arsenal play. They won't sit in a low block, they'll try and play football and Chelsea can control possession with the spaces in the 343 just like they did away at Tottenham, just like they did away at Wolves. But now, because that formation looks so, so poor at home against Saints, even though it was the wrong tactical approach, it did look poor, I'm thinking, oh, I just don't know anymore, man. One huge positive is Kovacic is back in, so I reckon he probably will go back to a back four system and have Kovacic in the midfield and kind of revert to type to the formation they've played the most this season. One interesting thing that Arteta is doing is he's brought Ozil back in from the cold. Obviously a very creative and talented player generally, and if he's having a good day, he'll look at an opposition like Chelsea like, you know what, I can work around some spaces here, create something, maybe get an assist or two, who knows, even score a goal. But Frank Lampard will be looking at that as maybe a positive, saying, right, we'll just be too quick for him. We know Ozil doesn't press, um, so they're not going to press from the front. We'll do fast passes around the back, and we'll try and get a physical game going in deep midfield with the likes of Kovacic and maybe a bit Jorginho, but maybe not. One thing I think is really interesting is to see what he does with Callum Hudson-Odoi. I don't think he will start, I think he'll bring Pulisic back in because he did look very good when he came on. Obviously Callum Hudson-Odoi has been going through a difficult time in terms of form and belief in himself with a lot of um, negative reaction coming from the Chelsea fan base in relation to him which is probably quite damaging to the young player when really he needs support to help develop his form. What Frank reiterated, I believe in this kid, I wanted him to sign, I'm going to keep backing him. So it'll be really interesting to see if he starts him, because that would be a bold move. If he starts him and he has a good game, masterclass. But if he starts him and he's still struggling to slowly develop his form and confidence back up, that could be even more damaging. So, I reckon he'll start Pulisic, and I do reckon he'll give hudson Adoy minutes off the bench, because he needs minutes, you know, you play football to develop confidence. So I do expect a front three of Pulisic, Tammy and Willian, I do expect Mason Mount to play in the number 10, and maybe Kovacic and Jorginho in his midfield too. Do you drop Kante? I know there's this tweet that's been going around, or stats, about ever since Kante's been brought back into the team, Chelsea have been losing. Whether that's him playing in a deep to pivot or whether it's him playing in a midfield flat three. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Kante's not playing bad. He looks like Kante, but maybe it's just a chemistry thing that really just isn't working. Not saying that it won't work moving forwards, but that's a really interesting one. Is Kante ruining the midfield battle? It just seems ridiculous when you think about it. Another interesting thing that I'd like to see I never really saw him had a bad game, but I kind of want to see Reese James come back in at right back and as Piliqueta move into left back. Maybe if he goes to a conventional back four, he will do that. And then who knows, Rudiger plus one other as a centre back partnership, whether it be Tomori or Zuma, he did look good with them. Um, well, to be honest, they've all looked good at certain times. To be honest, whoever starts in defence in terms of centre backs, I'm okay with, as long as it's not Tamori and Christensen, because I think that would probably be too frail, but I can't imagine he'd ever do that. David Luiz will be an interesting one to see the response he gets from the Chelsea fans or how well he plays for Arsenal. And really, in terms of opposition, it's nullifying the likes of Aubameyang. No matter what you say about Arsenal and how unbalanced they are often, that guy is an elite marksman. He's one of the greats in world football as a striker and you give him a chance he will score goals and he'll look at Chelsea and think right I fancy this I can get a goal or two here but generally right this is a game where Chelsea play better the pressure is off even though it's a London derby that sounds ridiculous they're away from home they play better away from home in big games it's the type of opposition that's not, they're not going to sit in a low deep block. They're Arsenal Football Club, it's a London derby, they're being coached by Mikel Arteta, school of Pep Guardiola. They are going to want to keep possession, keep the ball. Spaces will be afforded to Chelsea and ultimately it will be David Luiz 
maybe, I don't know if he's going to play in the two or three, but whatever. I think the spaces, the opportunities are going to be there for Chelsea to score goals. I think Chelsea will keep a clean sheet because Chelsea generally don't keep clean sheets. I reckon this might be a bit of a ding dong, you know, so I'm going to do a score prediction and I'm going to say Chelsea win 3-2 and it will be exciting nerve-wracking. I reckon loads of stuff's going to happen. I just reckon it'll be goals, but I do back Chelsea for a win here, as do the bookies ever so slightly, so Chelsea win, hopefully. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want to hear all your opinions and score predictions down in the comments below. Please do get down there. Let me know who you think is going to start, who's going to score, all that kind of luck. And if you've enjoyed the content today, please do like the video. And remember, subscribe if you're new. Go, do go subscribe to my other channel where I do other sorts of bits of content. I still do stuff on football in terms of me sitting on the sofa talking about football. I did a video on Callum Hudson the door yesterday that's gone down well, so make sure you do click the link in the top of the description and subscribe to Yan Plays. And you can also follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I think that's probably it guys, so you lot enjoy the football. Keep it locked to Football Therapy and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby